water, H2O. It covers 71% of the Earth's surface, but only 1% of it is fresh and accessible. In the Everglades, fresh water covers nearly everything, shaping over a million acres of subtropical wilderness as it flows down towards the ocean. Towering above the trees, the iconic Shark Valley observation deck gives us a panoramic view of the sloughs, prairies, and tree islands that make up this vast river of grass. Um, excuse me, Ranger. <sighs> My feet are soaked. What's with all of this water everywhere? In the Everglades, we are lucky to have a lot of fresh water. Water feeds the river of grass for as far as the eye can see. River of grass? It doesn't look like it's moving. That's because the water moves about three feet per hour. Along its journey, it visits many different habitats, providing a home for a great diversity of birds, fish, and reptiles. Oh, that's really cool. Let me help you see where the water goes. What the? Where am I? I told them to stop doing that. Where are your parents? Well, now you're in the cypress stone. These trees around us are living in the deepest water of the Everglades. This is where the limestone bedrock makes a basin. Yeah, no kidding. So these trees have to be super stable to be standing in that much water. So they have these buttressed roots, which means they're flared out at the base. Kind of like if you stand with your feet apart. And this area makes a great habitat for all kinds of birds and fish and even alligators. But this is not where the water stops. It keeps going. Where, where does it go? Well, let's give a call to some friends of mine down the way, and you can see. Hi. Greetings. I'm Ranger Patty. And I'm Ranger Emily. We're sitting in our kayaks along the Buttonwood Canal, surrounded by a dense mangrove forest. Around us, we can see vibrant green leaves and a tangle of prop roots. Here, the fresh river water meets and mixes with the salty seawater. Estuaries like this one are important homes for a lot of wildlife. In this habitat, we are actually connected to both the river of grass to the north and the Florida Bay to the south. Many marine animals grow up among the tangled roots of these mangrove trees. Mangroves are adapted to thrive in brackish water, and their long, stilt-like roots hold the trunk and branches above the water, all while providing the perfect hiding place for many fish, crabs, and even the American crocodile. Mangroves also protect our coastlines from wind and waves, and they're great places to see wildlife like manatees. Wow! So the water changes from fresh to salty along its journey. Sure does. Huh. Is that where it ends? Oh no. It keeps going, but uh, it's my time to clock out. So I'm going to send you along. Whoa! Oh, hi. Welcome to Florida Bay. Thanks. <laughs> Florida Bay makes up almost one third of Everglades National Park. The water is deeper here, but it's still shallow only about three feet deep on average. Huh. Oh, you're right. It is shallow. And the saltwater habitats of the Everglades provide important homes for threatened and endangered species, like manatees, crocodiles, and sawfish. People also rely on the waters of Florida Bay for boating and fishing. Huh. 
So the habitats change depending on if the water is fresh, brackish, or salty. You got it. Hmm. So the water flowing into the Everglades affects all of the habitats along the way. Exactly. Where there is water, there is life. The flow of water through South Florida nurtures the diverse habitats of the Everglades. From the fresh water of sawgrass prairies and cypress domes, through the brackish water of the mangroves, to the salty water of Florida Bay, we find magical opportunities to explore. As we enjoy this unique land, we must also preserve and protect it for future generations. Thanks for watching. See, See you soon. soon.